Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. James Gill and you join me for another Clinical Skills video. Today we're going to be looking at dislocations of the elbow and crucially how to relocate them. This is a very common injury. In fact, it occurs about you know, 12 to 25 percent of all injuries to the elbow and it typically um, occurs when you have a foosh, a fall on the outstretched hand, which is why it's something that comes up particularly often with regard to expedition medicine. Now, I say it's particularly common. It's actually a shockingly common injury in lacrimal dislocation. In fact, the elbow is the second most dislocated joint in the body after the shoulder. And in terms of absolute numbers, it occurs about six in 100,000 people. So this is something that, frankly, anybody who is working in the A&E department in sports medicine and in the expedition world should be able to uh, appreciate is something they're likely come, to come across and thus needs to be able to manage. The first thing that we need to understand is what we're dealing with when we have a suspected elbow dislocation. And it can come in two forms. We can have a simple dislocation where the uh, lacrinon has simply moved out of uh, alignment. Now, I say simply moved out of the alignment, it's still going to take a lot of force and could potentially damage the underlying structures, but there's at least no other bony damage occurred. Then we've got a complex uh, electron dislocation. The problem here is um, we're looking at fractures, whether or not that's fractures to uh, the coracoid, uh, whether or not we've got fractures to uh, the epicondyles or the ulna itself. The radius could also be affected as well, I suppose. In terms of uh, the injury, it can also be mistaken for a supracondylar fracture, which again could occur with a, a, a fall on the outstretched hand. Now, obviously, you're going to um, do an x-ray to determine, A, if you've got your simple um, dislocation or your complex one, and also if it is a dislocation and not a supracondylar fracture. But in clinical skills, we want to see what is possible without relying on imaging and things like that. And that's particularly important in the expedition setting. So if we want to rule out, or at least uh, highly likely exclude, a supracondylar fracture instead of a dislocation, we can look at the elbow from behind. Ordinarily, we'd see an equilateral triangle between the uh, two epicondyles and the olecranon. And in a supracondylar fracture, that equilateral triangle will be maintained. However, if you've got an olecranon uh, dislocation, because of the degree of movement you're going to get there, that equilateral triangle will be disrupted. So again, it's going to give strong suspicion for what's actually going to be found by the x-ray. Now, assuming that we've done the x-ray and we haven't found any evidence of fractures, i.e. we don't need to get the orthopedic team involved, we're going to want to try and manage this. And that's going to mean relocating. But before we can do that, it's vitally important that we make sure the patient is safe to do so. I.e. we need to check three things. We need to check whether or not there's any problems with the brachial pulse. Now, it might be better described to say we want to check the brachial artery rather than brachial pulse, because we could just press over the elbow, but there's likely going to be a lot of swelling there, and frankly, an awful lot of um, pain if we press in the antecubital fossa. As a result, it's going to be much better to check over the radial pulse, which is still fed by the brachial artery. When we know the patient is vascularly intact, we then need to do the best we can to rule out damage to the median nerve and also rule out damage to the ulnar nerve, both of which can be affected by any severe ulnar injuries. Now, one of the reasons why it's so important to act on these injuries is failure to do so is going to have a potentially significant impact on the patient's life. And what I mean by that is I've been lucky enough that I haven't dislocated my elbow, but I have shattered it in the past. As you can see, that big scar there put back together by one of the eminent surgeons in Warwick, Matthew Stanislas. Now, although he did a fantastic job putting the elbow back together and I can got you know excellent range of movement, it's not perfect. You see, I can't fully straighten that arm. I've got a slight fixed flexion deformity. So if we miss a fracture um, and put the patient, uh, relocate that patient's elbow, we might not only worsen a fixed flexion deformity, which is possible, but we might impact on that neurovascular status, which is so important to rule out. So 
We've checked our neurovascular status. We know there's no evidence of a fracture there. What are we going to do? So if we've got a dislocated elbow, in terms of putting it back in, we want to have the first thing is make sure the patient has more than adequate analgesia because relocating a dislocation is going to be incredibly painful and we need to have sufficient analgesia, possibly including muscle relaxants like diazepam, to relax the muscles. And it's comparatively simple, but in practice is a major challenge. We're going to support the patient's um, humerus on a bed uh, with them lying on the front. We're going to apply a direct um, uh, load onto the forearm, at the same time pushing at the base of the olecranon, which will likely be standing up somewhere here, and we're going to push, overcoming the traction that we've got from uh, the tricep, and clunk, relocate it. If you've actually got somebody available to help you with that, they can provide the, the, the traction whilst you're using both thumbs to again try and drive the, um, uh, the olecranon back into a position. Well, if we're in the A&E department, we can have a colleague put traction to the patient's arm whilst we push uh, at the olecranon, at which point we're likely to get a, def a defined thunk as things go back into position. But it's very important to realise that you know, you're not going to just force this through. This is something the patient has to have more than adequate um, analgesia and muscle relaxants. Think about the force that you can actually pick up with your biceps and your triceps for that matter. They're there to hold everything in place as well as move. So if the olecranon has been dislocated, those muscles are likely going to have gone into spasm. You're going to need that muscle relaxant to help you overcome the power of that muscle. You're not going to be able to just manhandle it back into position, or certainly if you attempted, not without causing that patient significant pain or possibly injury. Now, if you're out in the expedition setting and you're on your own, but assuming you've got the analgesia and um, muscle relaxants, you can have the patient lie face down and then apply pressure either side of the olecranon and push it back into place. As with uh, the assistance in the A&E department, you're going to get that nice defined thunk as things go back in. At this point, we want to make sure that we haven't caused any problems with that relocation. So what I mean by that is, even when there was no fracture to start off with, it's possible that we can get debris from the injury inside the joint. So we need to get a, another x-ray. And if we're seeing widening of that uh, joint, then we're going to have to get the orthopedic team to take the patient to theatre to potentially clear that out. Again, something like that could potentially cause a joint locking and really impact on that patient's ability to move. Once uh, we've cleared all of that, we're going to keep the elbow flexed at uh, 90 degrees um, and allow the patient to get to physio as soon as we can, assuming there's not been any issues with the fracture. Well, I hope that's been a useful um, overview as to how we would relocate and how we treat um, an electron dislocation. Uh, if it's been useful, please like the video and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.